morning from, well, I'm not sure if he's in the Madison area or not today, but our good friend from Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, attorney Dan Lennington. Good morning, Dan. How are you? Uh, good morning. I'm calling in from Oconomowoc, which is where I live, and I have my uh, home office here. So we're sitting here looking at two inches of snow here in Oconomowoc. Wow. Uh, and I, I bet so you got it bad up there, too. Well, you know, we yesterday we had some snow, but I'm looking outside, and it's, well, at least from where I can see, it's sort of concrete out there. But um, I don't think a lot of it has stayed, and I don't know if we got two inches or not, but... Anyway, I'm so the the best news about this conversation so far is that you're not in Madison. So yes, yeah, congrats. I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't and you don't have to reside in in Dane County. So that's all very good news for for you. But um, well, let's talk about we've got a number of things to to discuss as we were chatting off air. But initially, we'll talk about the uh, federal lawsuit that Will has filed against the Biden administration. Talk about what that's all about. Yes, yeah, so uh, we filed our 11th lawsuit against the Biden administration. And uh, we are now three years into uh, Biden's four-year term. So uh, we're at number 11, and hopefully we'll get that up to 15 or 16 next year. Uh, but our 11th lawsuit is filed against... Um, the U.S. Department of Transportation uh, and Pete Buttigieg, Secretary Buttigieg, um, because the Biden administration, uh, when they give out money to build highways, <clears throat> and they got from Congress actually $370 billion to build more highways, just to build more highways and bridges, they have a, a law that says, they have a rule that says 10% of all that money has to go to businesses who are owned by women and certain minorities, not all minorities. And so uh, you think about when you're driving down the highway uh, and you're looking around, all the different types of companies that would be involved um, in, in building a highway, not just the asphalt and the concrete, uh, but the millers, who are the people who, uh, who grind up the old uh, asphalt and recycle it. Uh, we have two clients from Indiana who are, who are milling companies. Um, and they're losing out on contracts um, because they're owned by white uh, men. And uh, they know that some of their competitors just down the road, uh, which happen to be owned by the daughters of the owners, um, because they're women, they get special treatment. They get access to uh, 10% of all contracts are set aside for women and certain minorities. And so we have filed a lawsuit in federal court in Kentucky uh, to challenge this uh, program, which has been going on actually since 1980, but it's just getting worse and worse every year. So we're, we want uh, America's highways to be built um, based on uh, merit and the best companies, not based on race and gender, which is how it's being built. Our highways are being built right now. You know, I think, and we were talking about this off air, but I think a good litmus test for those on the left that are considering some sort of racist program going forward is that just substitute whatever race you are trying to uh, give favor to, just substitute white in there and say a white only whatever and ask yourself if that would be perce perceived as racist. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and w another litmus test is to ask a liberal um, what what they think an Asian person is, because there's a lot of a lot of these affirmative action programs say, well, this is for you know blacks, Native American, Hispanics, and Asians. But when the when the when the liberals say that that an Asian gets uh, a benefit, um, they do not actually mean people who are from or whose grandparents are from Asia. They mean uh, basically China and Southeast Asia and Japan and, and Indonesia and Thailand. They don't mean the Middle East. Um, so for all the uh, concern about from the left. For our, our the the people in in Gaza and then Palestine and West Bank, none of the federal uh, programs or even actually any of the state programs that are set aside to help minorities consider people from the Middle East or North Africa as minority. They consider them white. 
Um, so if you're from Turkey or you're from Iran or your grandparents are from uh, Syria or Jordan or Egypt, um, you're considered just as white as I am, and you don't get anything. Uh, you don't get any special scholarships. You don't get any set-asides if you have a company. You don't get special COVID relief or anything like that that's been going on. So uh, there's a lot of race-based. Uh, when you start <clears throat> start dividing up people based on race, it gets really arbitrary and unreasonable really fast um, because even the liberals and progressives who love race-based programs, they can't seem to define uh, who is what race and who fits into what category. So they really are as shallow as I perceive them to be because despite the fact that they may say that we're, we're doing this to ensure that uh, someone that's not like us can embrace their heritage and culture, they're truly judging them on how they look on the outside. And, and I mean, that's the distinction is that it, it truly is about melanin <laughs> in their skin. Yes. It's reducing people to a box. It's reducing people to say, just check this box. And the liberals and progressives, they don't really, really even care what the box says. For example, they, uh, uh, the left likes to give preferences to, quote, Hispanics. But if you talk to any of these policymakers, and I testified at the legislature last week, and I said, do you even know what Hispanic means? Do you even know what that word means? Do you know that that word was invented in the 1970s and that before 1970s, no one identified as Hispanic. Do you know that it means someone from a Spanish-speaking country? And do you know that people from Brazil and Guyana and Suriname and Belize, those, those people from Latin America, those are not Hispanics? Um, it's, they, they almost don't even care. The, the, and we have sued the Evers administration over this. They, they almost don't even care that, that their racial categories are completely arbitrary because they are they're about you know giving special preferences based on race they're about treating people as members of groups and giving out giving out little you know treats to certain groups um uh and, and apparently in hopes of incurring favor with their leadership um and that just demeans someone it tells a person tells a business owner you know somebody who owns a concrete company or asphalt company or a plumber or whoever has, is, might be supplying uh, some services to the government, that you're not, uh, you have no dignity as an individual. You, your only worth to us is whether you can check the box, whether you can check the box that says black, Hispanic, Native American, or Asian. If you can't check one of those boxes, um, we're not interested in helping you. Um, and so that really demeans the value of, of the individual and it, it puts us all into categories and groups that apparently we're just supposed to fight with each other. That's, that's what they want. They want us to burn down cities and fight with each other and, and vote certain ways. Okay. That's really sad. So, um, Dan, let's talk about free haircuts. You've alerted me to something going on in our listening area. Does that apply to me? <laughs> no. The, this, I just I heard this from a parent last night. This is from the Stevens Point Public School District. Stevens Point Area Public School District. Um, I'll just read it to you. Um, it says, join us for a free event made for K through 12 students of color. I'll oh, pause there. Who's a, who's a student of color? I bet the, the white women who run this program can't tell you who a student of color is. Oh, well, but uh, this is a program pale. for K through 12 students of color. It says, quote, skilled hair and beauty specialists will provide simple hairstyles and cuts to help bridge the equity and achievement gaps that many of these students face. That's all in one sentence. And so if you had to rewrite that sentence, it would say that students of color, because of their hairstyle, they face achievement gaps. Um, I'm not sure if there's any... Um, study or empirical evidence that kids, students of color, are have lower head uh, test scores because of their hairstyles. In that, if you just give them haircuts, they will do better in school and close the achievement gaps. But that is what Stevens Point Area School District is saying. This is 
kind of surprising. Stevens Point just recently has done a number of things with diversity, equity, and inclusion that I was sort of surprised about because this school district was not on my radar as a, tr- uh, a problem school district uh, in the last couple of years. Um, but just a few weeks ago, they sent out a note to parents saying that they're going to create um, race-based parent groups. They're going to create these things called, um, it's called Real Talk, Real Talk for Parents. And they want parents to come and talk together about inclusive and supportive environments. That's from this uh, website. And they're going to divide up the parents. And so they will actually have a whites-only parent group. A parent group just for whites. Whites only. They'll have an Asian parent group, a black, an African-American student parent group, biracial group, a Hmong group, um, Latinx, <laughs> Latinx. So someone would have to identify as Latin, Latinx, which if you read any polls, um, most people who are from Latin America um, reject the label uh, Latinx, but apparently, again, the people who put this together are not aware of uh, the problem with that term. And Native students, it doesn't say Native Americans, um, it doesn't say Indigenous people, it just says Native. It must students. be Stevens, Native Stevens Point. I mean, like people who I, I don't grew know who's up in Native. Point. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I guess they. Uh, but again, this is just another attempt, um, and this is Stevens Point. Ridiculous. They would like to racialize education. They would like to focus on the fact that um, we're all members of certain racial groups, and we got to put you in those groups, and we got to talk about, ironically, talk about inclusion in groups that are exclusive. Um, which is very confusing to me. Um, but again, they do not. They want. They do not want to treat students as individuals. Educating them based on their individual needs, so their individual test scores go up, so that when they grow up and graduate, they will be um, virtuous individuals with lots of skills who go out in the job market and get jobs. They want to put them in groups, and if there's any disparities among groups. They want to eliminate them, even if it means uh, bringing down the smartest kids, getting rid of AP classes, getting rid of honor rolls, which we've seen all across the state, uh, getting rid of uh, opportunities for excellence um, in an effort to make all students apparently equally unsuccessful. And I haven't looked up Stevens Point's numbers, but I would guess that they're like the rest of the state where only about 40% of the kids in the district are proficient in math and reading. And yet... Um, your taxpayers in Seaman Point are probably paying about $15,000 per student uh, to educate those kids uh, for, that, uh, for that 40% achievement, um, which, is, um, which is just about uh, a little bit under how much it costs to send a kid to UW-La Crosse uh, for an entire year for room and board. So uh, for most of our public schools in the state, it's actually cheaper uh, – to send them to UW for a year, including room and board, um, than it is to actually educate them in the public K through 12 system, which is which tells you a lot about uh, the waste, the absolute waste that's going on in our public school systems. And the victims are the kids and the parents who can't afford to send their kids to to rich and fam- uh, fancy private schools. Yeah, educate in air quotes. Let's let's just I, you know let's just make that clear. You know, just I gotta let you go, but you know, I, I I have to believe that those who and and I mean I won't even say I have to believe it's obvious that those who have come up who are the geniuses that came up with these ideas, the people that put this together, evidently, likely are the racist Democrats in the Stevens Point's er, Stevens Point area, and I hope that some of our listeners inquire about that, particularly those that are in that area that send their children to Spash because. Uh, evidently, they are telling students as a whole, "We want to break. We want to break you all down," and and particularly those who are non-white that are privy to these additional opportunities, like whatever free hairstyling and free haircuts. That there's something wrong with them, and unless they are given these free haircuts or free hairstyles, uh, they will continue to be less than uh, their white counterpart. And and I mean, shame on them. Shame on them for uh, 
adding that mentality or encouraging that mentality among children, among school, impressionable young people. It's, 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 it's disgusting to me. Well, Dan Lennington from Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, thanks for joining me this morning. As always, I love our chats and uh, look forward to talking with you again soon. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Thanks.